projects to do, but uh, the next project on my list is going to be this 124 scale uh, Max Verstappen car. It's the Red Bull from season 2020, I believe. Uh, it is currently a radio control car, uh, but we are going to convert that to a Formula One 124 scale car, and we're going to chip it, and we're going to make it digital, and hopefully everything will work out just fine. So we'll get started. First thing you got to do is rip all the guts out, so that's the next step. Basically, we're well, just going to take the bottom off, going to pull all the guts out. Um, radio control stuff we're not going to need as we go forward anyway, but there are some components in this that uh, can be salvaged for different things. There's some wiring and things like that. Okay, so the next part of this is getting rid of these electronics and stuff that we're not going to need. Don't need that lithium battery. Don't need this board in here. Um, I'll probably just cut the wires or pull them off the board, but I do save all the screws. I don't want to waste any screws because you never know when you're going to need them. So I have a little box. The idea is to try to do this without getting spending a ton of cash. So with a car that costs 40 bucks and then a chip that costs 40 bucks uh, and then eventually you might have to get tires or wheels depending on which way you go. So now see that that little uh, gear on there? That's a one millimeter shaft on that. So those gears are the, have the same number of gears as the Formula One cars and the 917s that strip out the gears once in a while because you are uh, machining the tires or you put too much pressure on it, you're pushing a car. So those gears will actually work to replace those. So for me, I'm gonna hang on to these. All right, so that's that part. Now on this, differential and motor assembly so there's another motor there it has another gear but we're going to leave that in place for now because until i get the chassis built which that's going to be like part four or whatever then uh we're not going to have we want to use that to fine tune the fact that we have to have a guide keel and brushes and they have to be a certain distance so we're going to go over some options for that uh that's coming up here in a few minutes okay so next up we're just going to go ahead and uh, remove the front suspension. All right, so front suspension's off. Set that aside. So we don't necessarily want the wheels to spin or to steer. So we can accomplish a couple things. We can do this a couple ways. So one is we're going to remove all the pieces we don't need. Secondly, I'm going to take this out because we might need that screw hole to uh, for a guide keel assembly. And we're going to talk about that in a few minutes. Um, and then, but you can drill through this and drill through that and put screws in those to hold that tight. And then that'll hold the wheels in a straight ahead position. Uh, and we'll get to that shortly too. All right, as we go forward, I'm gonna disassemble this front suspension and I'm gonna tighten it up temporarily. Uh, I may glue it together later, but for now, I'm just gonna get these out. And you can see they're too short to use for uh, the what, I'm, what my plan is to use the, uh, the this guide keel. So one way to tighten these up just temporarily, and I don't want it necessarily to fall apart, but it's going to. And if I just take a pair of pliers and I squeeze the knuckles to the point that they're not square any farther, you just kind of squeeze them down, make them kind of oblong, a little pressure on it so now they're out around that'll tighten it up so that while i work i can figure out what i'm doing so i'm just going to squeeze these then when i put it back on the car it's a little tighter it takes a little force to put it in place and see now it's already stiff enough that it doesn't move the other thing i'm going to do is i'm going to drive that pin in to get that wheel a little closer i did one of those uh, you see i made the pin going. I actually just took it to my vise, stuck it in a vise and squeezed it. It didn't seem to hurt the wheel, but I did take the tire off to do it. But I think I can do it with a pair of channel locks uh, and this little piece of metal here. So we'll see if that works. If I get it on there just right, I should be able to, uh, just like having it in, in a bench vise, 
squeeze it down some. Oh, look at that, there it went. It's not too tight. Not enough movement. All right, so, done. So, what you want to do at this point, try to figure out what is the method you're going to use for the guide keel. So, I've got a couple different options here. This is a piece of a 124 Formula One Sauber car that uh, came out probably in the 90s, right? Um, I've used the back part of this chassis for another car, and I'll discuss that shortly. Um, but I have this piece. So, if I wanted, I could theoretically make a drop down. Uh, brush and, and guide which would keep you know control of the brushes on the track just like in the 124 scale cars so I have some of these chassis coming so I can convert the back to put the the, the new motor and drivetrain in it and when I have that once I do that I'll have this this section remaining so right now I'm deciding well what do I want to do I could also put a hole right here and use the 124 guide but it's kind of you know, old fashioned. Another way to do it would be to use a guide from a later version of an evolution or a evolution car 132 scale. This allows you to use brushes that are designed for this. So it goes, this goes in and you have the same thing with the twin brushes. So that's, that's good. I've already made one car like that. That's also easy because same thing again, I can drill a hole in that, round this off, machine it so that this will spin. That puts it at about the right height. I don't know if you can see that, so that the guide will keep traction. And on the last one, I left it loose, and I'm thinking about the, putting a spring on it so it keeps uh, contact with the track as it goes around. Because once you get to turns with a 124, especially if you're using bank curves, these Formula One cars they don't like to go around bank curves, regardless. So, so that would be a good idea. Then my uh, Mercedes. Hamilton car I use. This is the chassis off of a 27 244 Formula One uh, Ferrari, 2007 version. And this is very common for those cars at the time. Well, on the last one, I cut this section out. And where this hole goes, that bolted on just perfectly. And it was about the right height and everything. In fact, I'm going to grab that real quick and show you what it looked like. So this is that section, or not that, this piece right here cut off, screwed into place, and it's got about the right distance. This car actually performs pretty well. And uh, so I could do that, that's pretty good, but these are harder to come by for most people because you have to get a one, uh, you know, 132 Formula One car and then, then basically destroy the chassis so you can use it, and who wants to do that? Um, so, and then if you look at this too, you'll see this piece and this piece, or sorry, this piece and this piece used to be together that's the motor section that supports the new motor that's going to go in the gears and drivetrain that will get rid of this particular type so we'll cover that more later so back to this so the most common of these brush guard brush holders is what you see in the newer career cars and every dtm car every gt car have this now so i thought well that would be kind of cool if that fit and uh, as luck would have it it's about perfect. So I'm going to probably try this. A lot of this stuff is just experimental. I, I do what I think works the best as I go, as I make each one of these cars. But I can't believe the luck on this, that those two screws that hold the suspension together are near perfect to support this device. As you can see, they're going to bolt right up. I'm just going to make a little shaving here and there. So those will go on. And it's just about the right height. I've stuck it on the track. I think what I'm going to have to do is, um, oops, sorry. What I'm going to have to do is put a little uh, shim between it or a spacer, and then that will bring it to the right height. I even thought about possibly uh, gluing the suspension together, using this area with springs to allow it to move up and down. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. We'll uh, see how it goes as we go along, which is all part of what I'm doing here. But I'll probably take a little bit of this off. But right now, it looks like it will clear everything. I might even be able to put a pin on it so that that's spring-loaded. This also puts the, the guide back further 
so that when you put the sensor for the track change, it can be back here or up here and it has to be a certain distance from the guide in order for it to not run into the switch as it switches. But again, uh, it's something that we got to figure out how to do it. But I think this is the way I'm going to go because as I build these cars and I've got a, another Ferrari to do uh, and another Mercedes to do, if I do them all the same, we can I can put plans together and show people so that people can figure out how to do it themselves. Uh, we put the front suspension back together, and then I was going to talk about making spacers for this to hold this hold the guide down inside the remote for these cars. Uh, once you take them apart, these are like just the bolt stands. You know, the bolts go through those. It's the anchors or the supports or whatever that come out. So I ripped those things out. I use them all the time for different things. What I did was I cut two spacers, which I think they're going to be a little too thick, but I cut two spacers that thick out of this. If I have to get larger diameter screws, I'll drill those out. If this goes the way I think it's going to go, they need to be longer for sure, because that one's already kind of strip it out. No, that's actually getting tight. All right, so now, see, there it is. So if that was to go on the track, that's what, how it would look. So I think this is the way I'm going to go. Good news, bad news kind of thing. So the, the guide keel is a pretty good idea using the ones off the career cars. However, I was hoping I could get something that was uh, common to every car. So I thought, well, I'll look at these things. You know, one of the DTMs. The one that I had is out of a uh, Peugeot like this. That's the one that was in there that I used the spacers with. But uh, in looking online, trying to find these components, you just can't buy them separate. Only people are parting out their cars. And what I found is they're all pretty different. So this one, if you take a look at it, um, this one is, has a cutout for the axle. So it's a little bit different shape. This one, which I took off, doesn't have a cutout for the axle. It's just full circular. And on this one, not only is it cut out for the axle, and I don't have it open, but you'll also see that it's a, very, a lowered area. So there's differences in all of them. So I guess the answer to this is sacrifices have to be made. You got to figure out which car you want to sacrifice and or buy a chassis online to make it work. I opted for this LaFerrari because I don't use the car and I mounted it and it really does appear that it's the right one for it. So that's where we're going to go with it and uh, we'll continue on and start try to make this thing work. Okay, so what I found is that the things... I know are far outweighed by the things I don't know. So as I take this part, uh, I want to mount this on here. I had it on there at one point, uh, and I had it so that the majority of this uh, circular side, which is hard to see here, was facing forward. But what I didn't know, one of these unknown unknowns, was that the guide keel can go both ways, right? And you can put it on here, and so this could be facing forward and the wires at the front, or better for me, for this, is that the wires go to the back. So now by placing it on that way, it puts it in a better position on the car. So now what I'm gonna do is drill the holes, uh, disconnect the wires from the connector, and then I'll run them through this uh, front end assembly and get it onto the car. So I'm gonna uh, drill a hole right through here, which will put the wires to the inside of the front end assembly, and that will then allow the wires to run up where I can then connect the chip to it once I get the wiring done for the chip. To remove the wires on these, I'm hoping I can get this. You just have to remove, you have to loosen those little pins that are the little keepers to pull the connectors out. So you kind of get underneath that thing, you roll it up, and then you can slide the wire out. So now the wire comes out. Just have to remember which way is which. So I, in this case, I know that the black wire goes to the right. All right, then we're gonna screw the screws down on that. The guide keel assembly is a little less wide. So I can get one side started, but then you kinda gotta squeeze the other one in. Now I'm using a little bit longer screws that came with the radio control car to begin with. And I think the front suspension will be pretty tight and good. 
Nice. Wires through. All I gotta do is put the connector on. Slide it in. It'll click in place. Locked in. So now we got the guide keel in place. We'll put it back together and go from there. The nice thing about this, these cars that I've found so far is that this snaps in kind of nice and it holds on pretty well until you get the rest of the screws in. So now we've got everything on there. We're going to test the fit. I'm going to put the brushes on here. We're going to see how it does on the track. Yes, yes, yeah. okay, yay. Here we go. Hopefully, it's set up kind of nice. Actually, a little higher off the track than I would like, but it doesn't look bad. Might have to put some shims under there to bring it down a little bit because around turns, it might have a little bit of a difficulty. So, okay, so I use spank curves. These are 230 curves around the car here right now and then of course my wheels aren't straight um, as it comes up the track that wheel is going to want to come up off the track that was steep onto the curb or onto the turn looks good there what's going to look like on the bottom so it's looking like it's working okay and i think i'm probably going to have to put some sort of a uh, spacer in there to drop it down All right, so for this process, this is the Slot Technic chip. This is a SCD 1044. It comes from uh, Slot Invasion USA. Uh, they also sell an MPL chip, which is a little bit different. Uh, this is the, the both of these are uh, up to 18 volts, so they can go in the 124 scale cars with the 124 scale track and transformer and all that stuff. Um, I'm going to fit it in here because it's going to fit really nice right in the middle of this. Uh, chassis uh, we'll just maybe use some two-sided tape on it but instead of wiring hard wiring the uh, the leads for the brushes I'm going to go ahead and take a connector off of this uh, Carrera Evolution chip and I'm going to take the motor connector uh, for the motor leads off of it as well and I'll put that on and then this is a lead off of a Carrera motor and I'm going to wire that into the existing motor until I change that motor out this way we'll get this thing reassembled get it on the track see what it can do I got to change the tires out eventually but uh, before we do that but we'll do all this next and go from there I'm get out one of the 132 formula one cars to talk about something real quick so as you if you decide to make one of these cars the important relationship between the IR emitter and the guides it's kind of critical because if you have it too far back then the IR emitter won't trigger the track soon enough. And when you switch, a lot of times the switch will be in process of switching and it hits on the guide and derails the car or deslots the car. So what I try to do is try to understand where that relationship is on a factory car. So in the case of this Carrera 132 car, here's the IR emitter right here. And brush is here. So if I kind of center all this stuff up, then I can put this brush somewhere in this area. And I put a little dot there with a silver paint pen so I know what I'm doing, right? So trying to get that there might be tricky. Um, the leads on this particular chip aren't as long as I would like them to be in the location where I'm gonna mount the chips and it's gonna be here. But I think I'm just gonna be able to make it. I'll drill the hole. I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna, they come with a little plastic seat, which is nice to put the, to put the IR sensor in. Uh, I'm not going to use that seat. I'm Instead, I'm just going to drill a hole the size of this uh, LED. It'll come down through here. I'll probably put a hole on the inside of that so that the wires run and a hole through there. And I'll run the entire sensor and everything through that. It's going to be external to the car chassis, but it's not going to be very well seen because they do a nice job with the black shrink wrap. So that's the next step, uh, and we'll go from there. So to fit this LED, I'm going to use a number 32 drill bit which if you were to do that in, in an inch equivalent, it's 29 250ths. So you'd have to round it down to like 764 or round it up to an inch and eighth, or to an eighth or 764th down. So eighth up, 764th down. But this is a numbered drill bit and it's number 32. Um, and I use this because it fits, fits the LED pretty tight.
I'm like really pushing lightly because I don't want to go through the rest of it. I should probably take the front, the front piece off of it. So that should fit that pretty nice. Yes, it will. All right, so now I just have to make it so that it's kind of hidden. I don't want it to be super visible. So I think I'll just uh, probably drill a larger hole here to run it through and maybe a notch here. To run it through so i'm just gonna now now i'm gonna run that hole all the way through so there i'm through now i'm gonna make it larger i should be able to do it this way with that God damn. very close to where the formula one mounts all right and if you, you have to also make sure that it's about in the right width wise from the edge. If you want to check it, you can put it on the track, see where your, your uh, sensor eye hits, but it should go right through there. I think it'll be all right. So I was trying not to have the wires visible because I'm trying to make it look more realistic, but they'll be right there. I'll run them straight in there. I'll run a notch through that so it doesn't tear anything up. Then by the time I blacken the wires, you probably won't see them. I took this plate back out, drilled a hole through there, I guess you can see that. Uh, I kind of pushed down a little bit on the LED, turned the, turned the wires a little bit. You got to be careful not to push these too hard because they will break. So now the wires come through there, it's notched out, it goes through there. I notched out the top plate to allow the wires to go through. No, nothing's binding up. This will be for the, for the brushes, that'll go to these wires. This will be for the motors, so that's the next part. Um, I'm going to temporarily put those together. I'm not going to, not going to make them, uh, crazy. I'm going to hook the connector on here, but I'm just going to use a little shrink wrap to put them in place. No solder at this point. So before I even put, hook the motor up, I could take this over to the track and see that my sensor is lined up correctly by just, uh, putting the car, sliding the car, rolling the car on the track and see if I get a number change on the, the position tower. So if I see a lap change when I go over it, that's good. Sometimes I'll run them over the uh, the switch, pull the switch trigger. I mean, I don't even have the motor hooked up to them. I'm just trying to see that I got that I got the uh, sensor in the right spot before I go too crazy. Let's see a little more. So I have my connections for that. So then I run it to the motor or to that. So now, without even hooking it to the motor, I can run it to the switch run it over the switch and uh and see if i get a change if everything works here all right so let's put it on the track and then uh like i said i don't have the engine the motor hooked up yet the goal is just to see does it have the capability to make the uh the center register a lap so i'm just going to push it over in which case yes i now have one so Theoretically, even though I don't have the motor hooked up, I should be able to uh, program it. And then, if I push it over a switch, uh, hopefully, and hold that, the switch will change. And the switch did change, so that was good. So that means that I've got the eye in the right spot. So I'm good on that. So that we'll go back and uh, finish up hooking the uh, the motor up, and we'll go. Uh, see how that does. All right, so I remember from the last one that I did that the uh, in order to make this motor run the correct direction for the Carrera chip, I needed to uh, kind of wire it backwards than what you think. So the purple goes to black, the gray goes to the red wire, and uh, if this works, it should propel it at least. Um, it won't go anywhere because it has terrible tires, but all right, so. So that's good, that's a good sign. Now if I uh, go down the track here, it should also, if you can make it down the track, and it switches, so good. We're gonna put some tires on it, I'm gonna put the top of the car on it, and I'm gonna give it a test run before I solder everything together. So what I'm gonna try to do here is uh, machine the wheels so that they'll uh, accept the tires that I have. Not sure if it's going to work. Uh, I 
don't really have a fixture for it. I'm just going to use this piece of track and a razor knife and see if I can get it to work without frustrating myself. So, um, kind of hard to show you this, but let me see if I can move the camera to the other side here. Okay. So I can do this without knocking anything over, without trashing something. What I'm going to try to do is take this outer edge off the wheel. I already cut it here down to the wheel. That's going to allow these, uh, I think these are 27 by 18 tires to fit on. Trying not to damage anything. All blood aside, that should allow me to put the tires on. If the motor held up enough to do the test, eventually we're gonna fit it with one of these RMS 124, which is uh, 24 volt max, but it's 12 volts, so it's um, 30,000 RPM. You can still run it on the 132 scale power supply. All right, so tires are on pretty good. So I added two magnets to it. One is a traditional Carrera uh, Formula One or DTM magnet. The other is off the stack right here. These are from a company called Magic Magnet. Um, they're fairly close to the right size, but they're not exactly right. Anyway, um, put the duct tape over it because I just want to be sure that if the magnets fall off, they don't hit anything. Now, we're gonna give it a give it a go. Um, see what happens. See if it switches lanes, uh, and does all that stuff. And here we go. Not bad for a first run. <laughs> 